Good morning, good morning. Welcome to Ashford United Methodist Church, our virtual worship service. My name is Irv White. Welcome to what we call Sunday Shout Out. This is an opportunity, the first uh, first five minutes of the uh, worship service, an opportunity for us to, to have a little virtual meet and greet and to say hello to everybody. It's a bit on the chilly side here in uh, Houston, Texas this morning. I know some of you in other parts of the country and the world are probably experiencing some um, weather that's uh, a, a bit nippy uh, but but it's 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 cold here. It's been that way uh, for a couple of days. So we're looking forward to some sort of a warm up at some point soon. So we're so glad that you're joining us today. I'm excited about uh, today's worship service, and and I hope you are as well. You know, I, I I've been uh, hoping and, and and praying for 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 our congregation, especially as we move through 20 and 22, that we live into. Uh, what God has called us to 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 be and to always remember who we are in Christ. And so I want to share uh, just a few verses of, of, of a psalm with you today that I think speaks to that. This is Psalm 139 and, and just beginning uh, with a verse 13 and, and, and verse 14. It says, for you formed my inward parts, talking about God, what God did for us, formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. I hope and pray that you understand who you are. You're fearfully and wonderfully made and God made you and everything that God does is wonderful and amazing. So uh, God bless you. Uh, listen, let me say hello to uh, some folk who are standing by waiting to be uh, waiting for me to call the roll. So good morning. Hey, Ken Turk. Good morning to you, sir. I hope all is well with you and your <laughs> Ken says, baby, it's cold outside. Yeah. Makes you want to sing that song, doesn't it, Ken? Uh, good morning to you. Hey, good morning, Janila. God bless you. I hope all is well with you and uh, your family. I look forward to seeing you at some point soon. Hey, Fern Hubbard, good morning to you. It's always great to uh, hear from uh, you. I, I, I hope I get to see your face in the place uh, at some point uh, soon. Thank you so much. Hey, Leonard and Judy Kurger, God bless you both. Always good to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, uh, Cheetah Trevino, good morning to you. Uh, happy Sunday to you as well. And Rebecca, you're in the house. God bless you. Thank you so much. We're praying for you. Thank you for praying for us. Hey, uh, Victoria, good morning to you. So good to uh, hear from you. I hope to see you uh, at some point soon as well. Hey, Sharon Saunders, hope you're feeling great. Always good to uh, see you. Uh, and so God bless you and your family. Tell you I said hello. Hey, Alice Hasten James, good morning to you as well. I pray that you and your family uh, and your granddaughter are, uh, are, are going and growing and glowing in uh, Jesus' name. My wife, Lorraine, hey, good morning. Uh, Lorraine is somewhere in the building. I saw her car parked outside. So uh, she is here bright and early, probably working on some aspect of our free tutorial program that we offer. I'll share more about that uh, in the weeks to come with our virtual congregation. Our folk who join us at 11 o'clock on Sundays, they know a whole lot about that. By the way, you should be joining us at 11 o'clock every Sunday morning right here at 2201 South Derry Ashford Road on the west side of town. We look forward to worshiping with you. Hey, Carol, good morning to you. Look forward to seeing you a little bit later today as well. Hey, Jackie Mason Moore, God bless you and your family. Wow, it's cold. Yes, it is. You ain't ever lied, as they say. Uh, God bless you. Hey, Linda Adams, good morning to you. God bless you and your family as well. Cousin Harold is in the house. Harold, I know it's a little chilly up there in uh, Kentucky. Harold is uh, tuning in from my hometown of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. And uh, I know in the Nashville area, they got some parts of that winter storm blowing through there. So I pray that everybody uh, is doing well and staying warm. So listen, again, thank you so much for joining us uh, for our Sunday shout out. We'll begin the service in just a few uh Karen Sevier standing by to offer some praise and worship. And then uh, we'll have today's message. We're in part three of our sermon series, Aha Moments with Jesus, uh, Finding Jesus Today. I hope you'll be blessed by, by, by that. So listen, let's always remember that this is the day the Lord has made. It is our job to rejoice and to be glad in it. God bless you all. We'll see you in just a few.
Good morning, Asper Church family. It is just truly an awesome and wonderful day because we're here together to give the Lord thanks for all of the wonderful things that he has done, is doing, and we trust will continue to do. And then I would like to say thank you for being here and for joining us each and every week. Thank you so much. God bless you. I would also like to say thank you for those who are joining us for our 11 o'clock a.m. in-person worship service. God bless you. And I look forward to seeing you later this morning. For those who haven't joined us yet, you are invited to the 11 o'clock a.m. in-person worship service. I look forward to seeing you there when you join us. Amen. <laughs> I'm getting ready to sing, Come Thou Almighty King, a hymn I've loved forever. I grew up singing this hymn. And I'd like to give you a few seconds to look up the lyrics on your smartphone or tablet or whatever device you use. I would love it if you would join me this morning in singing this hymn. So I'm going to give you a couple of seconds. Come Thou Almighty King. Come Thou Almighty Help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all glorious, or all victorious, come and reign over us ancient of day. Come thou incarnate word, gird on thy mighty sword. Our prayer attend, come and thy people bless, and give thy word success. Spirit of holiness on us descend. All glory be to the Father, all glory be to the Son, all glory be to the Spirit. The blessed three in one. Come, holy comforter, thy sacred witness bear. In this glad hour, thou who almighty art, now rule in every heart, and ne'er from us depart, spirit of power. All glory be to the Father, all glory be to the Son, all glory be to the Spirit, the blessed three. To the great one in three, eternal praises be, his evermore, thy sovereign majesty, may we in glory see, and to eternity love and adore. Son, all glory be to the Spirit, the blessed three in one. All glory be to the Father, all glory be to the Son, all glory be to The blessed three one. It's time for today's message. We've made it to part three of our sermon series, Aha Moments with Jesus, Finding Jesus Today. Well, as I have shared the past two weeks, we are in the season of Epiphany. Epiphany actually began January the 6th, 12 days after Christmas, and it will run up to Ash Wednesday, which will begin the season of Lent. 
Epiphany is a designated window within the church calendar where we focus on remembering and celebrating the ways in which Jesus Christ is revealed to the world as our Lord and Savior. But you know, there are plenty of aha moments with Jesus all through the Bible. I mean, take, take the Old Testament. If we pay attention, we'll find Jesus in the creation story. We hear there in Genesis when God says, let us make man in our image. Jesus is there. We find Jesus on Mount Moriah. He steps in to take Isaac's place as the sacrifice, substitutionary atonement, the ram in the bush. Jesus is there. Jesus is in the ark with Noah. He's in the burning bush with Moses. He's in the wilderness with the Israelites, and he is with them on the way to the promised land. And then the word becomes flesh, and the promised Messiah takes on human form in the person of Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so now you have the shepherds in the field and the angel directs them to find Jesus in a manger. The Magi find Jesus when a star guides them to a house in Bethlehem. And yes, Jesus Christ is now dwelling among the people and becomes discoverable for all of those who want to find him. Jesus Christ is discoverable. You know, I love modern technology, especially wireless technology. We have the ability these days to connect a computer and a smartphone and headphones to each other with a simple click of a button. No wires attached. And for those of us who are who are somewhat tech savvy, uh, those of us who use wireless technology, we know that the first thing you have to do when you want to connect anything wirelessly is that you have to make it discoverable, right? You have to make sure that the device you want to connect is powered on and then that the Bluetooth mode is on on the device to which you want it connected to. So for instance, if my computer's Bluetooth is on, but my earbuds are powered off, well, my earbud, earbuds uh, can't be discovered. They can't be connected. In other words, uh, my computer and, and my earbuds will never have an aha moment with each other. Well, the good news is that Jesus Christ is always ready to be discovered. He's powered on and he's ready to connect to our hope. He's ready to connect to our hopelessness. He's ready to connect to our faith. He's ready to connect to our faithlessness. He's ready to connect to our joy, to our joylessness. He's ready to connect to our pain. He's ready to connect to our praise. He's ready to connect to our fears. He's ready to connect to our fearlessness. The challenge is for us to make sure we are Bluetooth ready for Jesus Christ to discover us. Finding Jesus today calls for us to pay attention. It calls for us to trust God for guidance, to stay humble in the presence of Christ. It calls for us to pray, praise, and proclaim. And we're adding three more to that list today. Finding Jesus calls for us to follow Jesus, to learn from Jesus, and to receive a new orientation in Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to serve. Lord, bless my words. Come, Holy Spirit, come. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. O oh Lord, my God, my Redeemer, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. So turn with me to John, John, the first chapter, verses 35 through 42, and they read as follows. The following day, John was again standing with two of his disciples. As Jesus walked by, John looked at him and declared, look, there is the Lamb of God. By the way, this is John the Baptist. When John's two disciples heard this, they followed Jesus. Jesus looked around, saw them following. What do you want? He asked them. They replied, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come and see, he said. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him to the place where he was staying and they remained with him the rest of the day. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of these men who heard what John said and then followed Jesus. Andrew went to find his brother Simon and told him, we have found the Messiah, which means Christ. Then Andrew brought Simon to meet Jesus. 
Looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, Your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, you know, John the Baptist had been prophesying about the coming Messiah. He'd been calling people to repent, prepare ye the way of the Lord. And so here in our text today, he is pointing to Jesus Christ. He's pointing him out in the crowd. He's saying, there he is. That's the Lamb of God. That's the one I've been talking about. You know, something we don't talk a lot about is the fact that Jesus was not the only person with the disciples. In fact, anyone who, who followed the teachings of another would have been considered their disciple. So John the Baptist had disciples, and he's standing with two of them right here in our text when they have a Christ encounter. And in this case, uh, what John had been teaching was about the coming Messiah. And it's almost as if he's saying, listen, that's the one I've been talking about. He is the real deal. Go follow him. And John, in fact, admits in verse number 31 that he knew a Messiah was promised. But he didn't know his cousin was the Messiah until he baptized him in the Jordan. He says in verse 31, I did not recognize him as the Messiah, but I have been baptizing with water so that he might be revealed to Israel. See, John understood that his primary role was to reveal the Messiah to the people of Israel. And now that John uh, has revealed Jesus Christ as the Messiah, he's saying, follow him. So that's what the two disciples of John do. They follow Jesus. Which leads me to point number one, Ashford. If you want to find Jesus, you got to follow Jesus. If you want to find him, you got to follow him. Listen, everyone follows something, right? We follow friends on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram. Uh, we follow the latest trends. We follow uh, our favorite TV shows, the cast and characters. In fact, we made following something as simple as clicking like. <laughs> All we have to do to say we're following something is to like it. But Jesus calls us to do more than like him. Jesus says, if you want to be his disciple, you have to be willing to give up some of the things you like. In Luke 9, 23, it says, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways, take up your cross daily, and follow me. I'm not sure that these two disciples of John knew what it meant to take up their cross on a daily basis, but they knew they wanted what Jesus had to offer. Do you ever think about what Jesus Christ has to offer you? When you cannot find a way out of darkness, Jesus Christ offers you light. He offers you guidance. Listen, before you follow someone into a business deal, you better follow Jesus. Before you follow someone into a marriage relationship, you better follow Jesus. Before you uh, follow uh, someone in, in, in how to navigate life in general, you better follow follow Jesus. I pray that even when you don't know anything else, you know to follow Jesus. So these two disciples literally fall in behind Jesus. And the Bible says that when Jesus notices them inching up behind him, he asks a very pointed question. What do you want? What do you want? You know, tone is so important. We, 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 we really do underestimate tone. But Jesus' tone wasn't that of someone who is annoyed because he's got these uh, two men following him, uh, inching up behind him, seemingly stalking him. No, the point of Jesus' question was really to challenge Andrew and Simon, challenge them to declare their intentions. What do you want? Why do you want to follow me? What are you looking for? Are you looking for sugar? If you're looking for sugar, it's on aisle five. Uh, if, if, if you're looking for canned vegetables, go over to aisle two. But if you're looking for a relationship with the Savior of the world, it's in me. What do you want? Do you only want a miracle or do you want a relationship with the miracle worker? Do you only want a blessing? Or do you want a relationship with the blessed assurance of me? 
the key to understanding their intentions is in their answer to Jesus's question. Jesus asked them, what do you want? Well, the first thing they do is they refer to him as rabbi or teacher. And then they ask him, where is he going? Where are you going? They declare him teacher. Did you get that? They called him teacher. If you want to find Jesus, you've got to be willing to make Jesus Christ your teacher. Are you declaring Jesus your teacher today? When you aren't sure where you are going, always be willing to ask Jesus, Lord, where are you going? And wherever you're going, that's where I want to go. Where you lead me, I will follow. Andrew and Simon knew the best way to be taught by Jesus was to remain in his presence. Jesus said, abide in me and I will abide in you. Jesus, where are you going? Jesus, my children are acting up. Where are you going? Jesus, my life is a mess. Where are you going? Jesus, I cannot seem to find uh, the peace I know is available to me. I cannot seem to, to find the joy I know is available to me. I can't seem to find the hope that is available to me. I can't seem to find the freedom I know is available to me. Jesus, where are you going? Lord, I've been relying on my own navigational skills for a long time and they ain't working. I need to follow your GPS, your God proven sensibility. Jesus, where are you going? And like any good teacher, Jesus didn't highlight the answer. He offered an invite to find the answer. He said, come and see. Let me help you experience what a relationship with me is really like. Come and see. Remember science class in high school? You know, it was one thing uh, when the science teacher simply told you what would happen when you mix baking soda and vinegar together. But it's a totally different kind of experience. It was a totally different kind of experience when we were able to take the vinegar and the baking soda and we mixed it together for ourselves. I mean, it was a, a lot more spectacular reaction when we did it, when we mix the desire to follow Jesus with the desire to be taught by Jesus with the encounter with Jesus, the reaction is impressive. It makes for all kinds of aha moments. In fact, Paul put it this way in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become Aha moments, they become new. Andrew and Simon clearly wanted something new. They were ready to receive a new orientation with Jesus Christ. If you want to follow Jesus, you got to be willing to have a new orientation in Jesus Christ. And Jesus started that new orientation process with Simon by changing his name. In verse 30, in verse 42, uh, after Andrew brings Simon to meet Jesus, the text says, looking intently at Simon, Jesus said, your name is Simon, son of John, but you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. You know, I read that and, and I wonder, wh why did Jesus first look intently at Simon? Because the text doesn't really say. But I'm thinking, you know what? Maybe Jesus was just sizing him up. Maybe Jesus just wanted to get a good sense of who this fella is, who, who Peter really is. You know, I see someone who is dependable. I see someone who is reliable. I see someone who is faithful. I see a rock. I'm going to call you Cephas. I'm going to call you Peter. You are the rock. Ashford, what does Jesus see in you? And are you willing to allow Jesus to size you up and to show you a new orientation to change some things about you. You know, I think about the Israelites. When, when, when they returned to Jerusalem from captivity, things were drastically different, right? 
the temple uh, had been destroyed. Uh, you know, they had been chained up and, and hauled off to exile in Babylon. Uh, they, they, they had been out of place. They'd been uh, out of sync uh, in a foreign land. But God made them a promise. He says, I'm going to bring you justice and then I'm going to lead you back home uh, and that the temple and your nation will be restored. Their disorientation in exile would, uh, would become a new orientation when they return home. Not a reorientation, but a new orientation. Not a return to the way things were before, but to something new. God is going to do something new. He's going to provide you with something much, much better. In fact, he promised a savior who would challenge the status quo, and Jesus did that. He promised a savior who would call sinners to repent, and Jesus did that. He promised a savior who would represent God's love to the least, the last, and the lost. Jesus did that. He promised a savior who would teach and bless. Jesus did that. He promised a savior who would serve. Jesus did that. He promised a savior who would open the door for a new orientation. Jesus Christ did that. Jesus Christ is the source of our new orientation. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the head and not the tail. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Of he, All his works are wonderful. He's wise in all his ways. Until we have a new orientation in Jesus Christ, we're going to live in disorientation. And we may not know any better. God is always doing a new thing. Only when we, the people called by his name, will humble ourselves and pray, seek his face, turn from our wicked ways, orient ourselves with the resurrected king, we're never going to be able to properly uh, apprehend or align ourselves or engage in whatever new thing God is doing. The windows of heaven can open up and blessings can flow but until we line up with the window, huh, blessings will drop all around us, but not the blessings God wants to drop on us. God is calling us to tear down our past. Stop trying to build a new future using the old parts. The old has passed away. There are some new parts to be used. There are some amazing aha moments awaiting us, Ashford. Jesus is waiting to be found right now, today, tomorrow, next week, next month, this year. Follow him. Be willing to be taught by him and expect a new orientation in him. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope this message bless you today. Can we pray for you? Our prayer team would love to pray for you and your family. Send us an email to aumc at ashfordumc.org and we'll be more than happy to stand in the gap for you, to celebrate God with you in Jesus' name. Thank you, as always, for your continued generosity. If you'd like to share a gift with us, we have multiple ways to give. The most convenient way online would be to use our website. Go to ashfordumc.org, click the Give button in the upper right, or you can text to give by simply texting my Ashford and the dollar sign to 73256. Of course, you can uh, mail in your uh, gift if you, would, if you would like to. Our mailing address is right there on your screen. We're located at 2201 South Derry Ashford Road in Houston, Texas, 77077. Lord, you are such an amazing God. Lord, we thank you for the gifts. We thank you for the givers. We promise, Lord, that we will do our best to become the church that you've called us to be, a church not just in this community, but a church for the community. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We're so glad that you visited us online. You can visit us in person each and every Sunday. We're here at 11 o'clock. We're located at 2201 South Derry Ashford Road. We're on the west side of Houston between the Westheimer Road and the Briar Forest. So come on in, bring your family. We'd love to worship the Lord together. 
So as always, I close out every worship service with three questions. I provide the questions. You know the answers. Who's the head of this church? Jesus Christ is the head of the church. Who is the church? We are the church, the people. And what are we as a church called to do? We're called to serve. God bless you all. Have a fantastic rest of the week. We'll see you next Sunday.